My name is Debbie Reynolds. They call me the Data Diva. Today I want to talk about data privacy and Web 3.0. So many tech folks uh, have been talking for quite some time about Web 3.0 or Web 3, but I thought this would be a good opportunity to explain what exactly that means and, and how that relates to data privacy. So Web uh, 3.0 is considered like the third iteration of the way the internet will eventually end up being. So in order to understand Web 3.0, you need to understand Web 1.0 and 2.0. So Web 1.0, which is kind of the initial uh, first beginnings of kind of the commercial internet, like over 25 years ago, was a place where people could connect to, let's say, websites or data sources that for the most part were just read-only. So think about a website that you go to on the internet that was read-only. Um, Web 2.0, so basically they, they consider that kind of read-only type of the internet. Web 2.0, which is what we have since kind of the early 2000s up until now, was a situation where not only could people read stuff on the web, but also write it. So, uh, for example, like Facebook. So people going on Facebook or social media to actually add content and information uh, to websites. Uh, but I think the Web 2.0 model is going to give way at some point to another iteration. So Web 2.0 in, in and of itself won't necessarily go away. But the next iteration will be a situation where people can own things in, in digital spaces. So uh, to go back again, Web 1.0, people consider that the read-only part of the Web. 2.0 is read and write. And Web 3.0 is read, write, and own. So what can people own in Web 3.0? So Web 3.0 will have a lot of different features and different ways for people to do computing that was not possible, say, 25 years ago. Uh, one big feature that people think about when they talk about Web 3.0 is decentralization. So having uh, people having the computing capability so that they don't have to, for example, go to a Google or uh, and have data be, for example, in a huge bucket where the company controls everything and they have to protect it. So decentralization means that people can, can maybe have their own uh, data and be able to protect their own data and only share it in a way where it doesn't have to be transferred to someone else. Also, this will give way to uh, having more, people have more control over their identity. So things like self-sovereign identity, where, for example, someone is kind of like a bank of their own information, as opposed to, for example, people right now have to go to a website, put in their, lo their login uh, information. Uh, this would be a situation where, uh, let's say, a, a site or a like business wants to connect with you, then you grant them access as opposed to you trying to get access from that company. Uh, digital currency and also digital assets. So digital currency, when you think about things like cryptocurrency for sure, decentralized finance, that's something they talk about, but then also digital assets, whether that be smart contracts or things that don't exist anywhere else except for in the digital realm, but they have some type of value. And, and also having things like decentralized autonomous organizations that can kind of move around and sort of grant or not grant access to their data. So uh, I'll be talking a bit more in the weeks and months ahead about uh, certain facets of Web3. Um, I think the basic thing you need to know from a privacy perspective is that Web3 will be the only iteration up to this point that has privacy by design built into it and kind of security in mind by limiting the amount of data that's being transported and, and, and sort of you know held together in, in certain locations. So I'll be talking a bit more about this, but I thought that this was kind of an easy, uh, fast way to be able to talk a bit about Web3 before we go forward. Thank you.